I have said from the beginning of the year that 2024 is going to be a rough year. 2023 was rough. But if I keep going, I'll say 2022 was rough. 2021 was rough. 2020. So at the end of the day, I always say, things are not really going to get better. That's right. <laughs> but God That's is right. going to give us what we need to endure the present times that we live in. Amen? Amen. We have to trust him. And we're not mistakes. We're supposed to be here. So whatever happens, he's going to give us what we need to get through. Once again, in a couple of weeks, there will be the Olympic Games in Paris. Amen? Mm -hmm. Comes around every so often. And it's a time when athletes in every discipline from all over the world compete against each other for that coveted prize of the gold medal. The silver medal. The bronze medal. And you're going to see story after story after story of these athletes striving to be the best that they could be. But one thing you don't see is athletes giving up. Amen? They don't go there. They've already been chosen as the best in their country. Now they're going there to try and be the best in the world. So no matter what they have to go through, they push themselves to extreme limits. And they have absolutely no intention of giving up. Anybody know what I'm talking about? Mm -hmm. That ain't giving up time. You don't jump on that plane and leave and fly over there to give up. Amen? Amen. They are training harder, making more sacrifices so they could be at their peak. If you're going through a very testing time or a struggle in your life right now, things aren't quite going the way you expected them to go. Don't let the enemy talk you into giving up. You don't know what God has for you just around the corner. The Bible says, don't get weary in what? Well-doing. In well-doing. Because just when you think, and not think, he blesses you. just to that corner. You don't know what God got around that corner for you. The Bible also says eyes have not seen and ears have not heard. Mm -hmm. Amen? Amen. Neither has it entered into the heart of man things that God has installed for those of you who love him. I want you to read the scripture with me, taken from Joshua. Joshua chapter 1. I'm going to read the first six verses. Tim, you ready for the sun? I am ready. All I can see is sunshine up in the front here. <laughs> see, I, I need my shades, you know. <laughs> it's, it's beautiful, it's beautiful. <laughs> See, there you go. If you're sad, just look at Tim. I know. You know right? <laughs> right down to your shoes. Let's <laughs> stop right there. Okay. <laughs> I like that. Okay. I had to say something. You know what I mean? <laughs> you didn't think you was going to get away. <laughs> Joshua chapter 1. Let's read the first six verses. I'm going to read. After the death of Moses, the Lord's servant, the Lord spoke to Joshua, son of Nun. Moses' assistant, he said, Moses, my servant, is dead. 
Therefore, the time has come for you to lead people, the, these people, the Israelites across the Jordan River, into the land I am giving them. I promise you what I promised Moses. Wherever you set your foot, you will be on land I have given you. From the Negrev wilderness in the south to the Lebanon mountains in the north, from the Euphrates River in the east to the Mediterranean Sea in the west, including all the land of the Hittites. They were the enemy. No one will be able to stand against you as long as you live, for I will be with you as I was with Moses. I will not fail you or abandon you. Be strong and courageous, for you are the one who will lead these people to possess all the land I swore to their ancestors. I would give them. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go on. Be strong and very courageous. Be careful to obey all the instructions Moses gave you. Do not deviate from them, turning either to the right or to the left. Then you will be successful in everything you do. Study this book of the instruction continually. Meditate on it day and night so you will be sure to obey everything written in it. Only then will you prosper and succeed in all you do. This is my command. Be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid or discouraged. For the Lord your God is with you whenever you go. Amen? Amen. Amen. Study this book of the law. How often? Every day. Every day. That you may observe according to all that is written therein. For if you do these things, then you will be successful. That's the word of the Lord. Father, in Jesus' name, we approach your throne this morning. We thank you for your goodness and for your mercy, for all the things that you've done and things that you're about to do. Lord, we are grateful to you for where, you, where we are right now, and we are grateful for where you're going to take us. Lord, your word tells us that flowers will fade and grass will wither, but the word of the Lord will last forever. Speak to us this morning, Holy Spirit, for your servants are here to hear. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Land is a precious commodity. And if you have it, you have something that is valuable. Amen? Amen. Land is important. In this scripture, we see that God is giving the children of Israel the land. He says, possess it. It's something of limited resource. In the society, the children of Israel was living in land that was important. Back in those days, people made their living from the land, farming, putting their animals on it to graze. It was important. If you didn't have land, then if you had seed, it wasn't important. I mean, you couldn't plant nothing. Amen? Amen. And seed need land for stuff to grow. Stuff need to grow, not only for the farmers to have crops, but for the animals to have something to live off. Amen? Amen. Now this is Pennsylvania. You all know all about that. Amen? Amen. If anybody knows about planting and reaping and waiting and the farmers complaining right now, ain't no water because everything dry. So we know how important it is. What good is having animals if there's nothing to eat? So what we need is a place to grow as well. And that is what this church is about. For me, this church is a place to come, get a word, which is a seed, graze a little bit with my family, be encouraged, get encouragement, be an encouragement, and I can grow. When you don't find a place that you can come and grow, what you're saying is, you don't need to. And like animals, if you don't find a place to graze, eventually what will happen? 
starve, die. That's the word. Die. Die. Mm -hmm. You need some place to grace. The Bible says, do not forsake what? The gathering with the others. Do not forsake the assembling of like-minded believers. When you think that you can live off the power of the moment, you are deceiving yourself. Let that sink in. When you think that you can hold on to something that you had, and it may have worked for you at one time, and that's all you have, you lose power. Are you hearing me, family? You lose the power to fight. And when you decide to go to that resource, you may find that in your present situation, that resource don't even work for you. <laughs> because you haven't stayed current, you may not even realize how far you have fallen from the place that you once were. You need a place to come fellowship and get a get seed where you grow because every day you're giving 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 what are you countering that with when do you receive oh. and believe it or not for many people the only time they even hear about the word of God is if they come to church on Sunday because they don't find the time during the week to get into God's word. So you come here and you receive and then tomorrow you give. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, putting out, putting out. You need to come and get to refuel so you can face every week. When I look at the text, I see the agricultural dynamics of a people who understand that concept. Without a place to call your own, you in reality are a wanderer. There are many wanderers, here one day, there the next day, over here, over there, then they're up, then they're down, happy, then they're sad, mm. there's nothing to pull on. Because only what's inside, you could get. If it ain't there, there's nothing to resort to. They never have what they need in order to thrive. We were created to thrive. And I'm not saying we don't have difficult situations, but we need God to give us what we need to get through the difficult situations. You've never, you're never meant to stay in a place. You're supposed to move. But if you're not learning how to move through difficult situations, then you stay there longer than you need to. And with God and the Holy Spirit who empowers us, they will give us the tools to move through those places quicker. Anybody know what I'm talking about? Because if you're not careful, you could, you could stay in a bad place a long time. And then you've wasted those moments <laughs> when you didn't have to. Amen? Amen? Amen. So, land is important. Being good for a moment 
don't work. Farmers will tell you, people who have land also need to have patience. Because you grow, you plant seed, and you got to wait for that thing to what? Grow. You got to wait for that thing to grow. The land only benefit people who are consistent. Coming to church, you have to be consistent for it to have any effect in your life. You can't be here today then move over there tomorrow, then move over there. And, and before long, you'll be saying, leave me alone. That's where you grow into. But farmers know, you plant the seed, and then you allow the seasons to change. And the growing happens through the seasons. But you can't get mad in one season and then pluck up everything because it ain't work. Because that season does something else. You got to wait for the next season to do something else. But as the seasons pass, you grow through each one of them. Anybody know what I'm talking about? It's a reality. But you need to have a place that you can plant yourself. To grow. Amen? Amen? The Bible says, be steadfast. What else? In well doing. No, that's not the scripture I'm looking for. Be steadfast, unmovable. Oh. Always what? Abounding in the work of of the Lord. I come to church to grace. Just being here and fellowshipping with you is an encouragement to me. Encouragement that people are still seeking God. It's not all lost. 5, 10, 15 minutes before I walk into this place, I can hear all, all sorts of things. Mm -hmm. Negative things. Things that if you think about them too much, hmm. will stress you out. And then I walk through these doors and we sing a thousand hallelujahs. Who am I that the highest king would welcome me. In my father's house, there's a place for me. I am who he says I am, in spite of what's going on out these doors. It's an encouragement to me. Lord, I lift your name on high and thank you for the power of your blood that covers me. And I'm reminded, it covers me in spite of what's going on outside. In spite of what may have happened this morning, last night, yesterday. Amen? Amen. We need to be encouraged. Because we need to get through some difficult times. Are you hearing me, family? Mm -hmm. God is not dead. Amen. He is still alive. And he is still protecting and guiding the steps of his people. Amen. Are you hearing me, family? Do not allow the enemy to discourage you or try to make you think because of some situation or circumstance. Give up. That is a lie from the pit of hell. Mm -hmm. And I am telling you this morning, keep putting one foot in the front of the other. You hear me? Because when you think not, God is going to bless you and take you to that place that you still can live that abundant life that he has already died for. 
the scriptures say that he cannot lie. He cannot. And he has promised. Nothing can separate us from his love. Amen? Amen. If you are not consistent, you will miss your blessing. People have made, been made to think that they could just throw some money on the altar, spend around three times and shout hallelujah and everything is okay. It don't work like that. That's right. Growth takes time. But if you're not in a place where you can grow, it doesn't matter. You could have the seed and put the seed on the windowsill in your kitchen and look at it every day. Amen? Amen. If you don't put that in some soil and give that some time and let that be watered and have some sunlight and everything, mm -hmm. nothing will happen. Do you have the seed? Yeah, you got it. But what good is it? That's right. Impatient people will never inherit the promises of God because everything needs to happen fast. The moment it rains, the moment the weather changes, the moment the storms arise, they're not consistent enough to get the benefit of the promises of God. They don't give themselves time to grow, to graze. There's a young lady by the name of Indy Ari. She's a songwriter and singer. She plays the guitar. She has a song and the lyrics say this. Slow down, baby. You're moving too fast. You have your hands in the air and your foot on the gas. You're about to wreck your future running from your past. Slow down, baby. You're moving too fast. Slow down. The Bible says wait on who? The Lord. The Lord. Wait on the Lord. You can wreck your future running from your past. The children of Israel were running, but they had good reason to run. They were a homeless nation. Some people are not homeless physically, but they're homeless spiritually. Some are homeless emotionally. Spiritually homeless people don't know who they are. They don't know what they believe. They don't know what to stand on. Anything anybody says that sounds good, they're on the bandwagon. Because they won't pick up the book, meaning the Bible, and read for themselves. Emotionally homeless people is when you have love, but you don't have nowhere to give it. <clears throat> the children of Israel were homeless. They spent over 400 years in Egypt and 40 years in the wilderness. Now, Moses brought them out, guided them, fed them, performed miracles. But then, as the scripture we just read said, he died. Excuse me. And he died short of finishing the mission of taking them into the promised land. So they had anxiety. Who is going to finish what Moses started? They were uncertain. Moses is dead. And the whole nation is weeping. Who will take us the rest of the way? Who will do the miracles like Moses? I can hear them now. Yeah, Joshua was his assistant, but he is only good as an assistant. You know how people go. <laughs> mm -hmm. I don't see him doing it. He ain't Moses. What do you do when you don't measure up to who you're being compared to? It's hard to measure up to another man's miracles. God said, and we just read it to Joshua, As I was with Moses, so shall I be with you. But God, my stick don't work like Moses' stick. God says, I didn't say I was going to do through you what I did through Moses. I said, I will be with you. 
as I was with Moses. I didn't call you to be a copycat. Because Moses was a great original. You hear that word? Original. Mm -hmm. I did not call you to be a copy of a great original. Lord, I can't imitate Moses. There will never be another Moses. I know that. But I will be meeting you on the mountain. But I won't do what I did through Moses. <coughs> I will not be setting any bushes on fire. I will not be giving you the Ten Commandments. But I will be with you just as I was with him. Joshua, you have to decide whether you want the ministry or the God that gave it to you. Are you hearing me, family? The only thing I promise you is that I will be with you. Your gifts, your talents, your resources, I will be with you. Just as I was with Moses. Family, until you appre appreciate being who you are, you will never discover what God can do in you. It cannot happen if you busy yourself trying to be like someone else. God don't make no mistakes. I'll say that again. God don't make no mistakes. And if you think you start serving a God who makes mistakes, you're in trouble. Because then you got to question everything. Amen? Amen. You have to believe that God is with you. And I said it again. You have to believe that God is with you. So he's saying in these passages, here's the deal, Joshua. Everywhere you set your foot, where your feet trod, everywhere you step, I will give it to you. Didn't we just read that scripture? Mm -hmm. He says, I will give it to you. The deed will not transform till you put your foot on it. Today we want God to give us stuff that we don't want to put our foot on. We have it all wrong. We say, God, if you give it to me, I'll take it. And God is saying, if you take it, I will give it to you. Oh, amen. Because people forget, the children of Israel, even though God says, this land is yours, here, I, I give it to you. They have to go in there and fight. <laughs> That's right. Are you all hearing me? Because them people who were there already, they didn't say, oh, you all reach, you was waiting on you. <laughs> here, take my farm. <laughs> You're right. <laughs> it didn't happen like that. <laughs> Amen? Amen? There's some things you have to take. Is yours, but you got to go in there and be aggressive and get it. Well, that's right. God says it's yours. Now I go take it. Because it was never theirs. They get it by default. Amen? Amen? And this can only be done by faith. We sing about the greatness of God. All that greatness is waiting on us to step on. Amen? Amen. The Bible says in Matthew 18, let's read it. It says, I tell you, I'm reading from 
verse 2. I tell you the truth. Unless you, what's your Bible say? Unless you what? Change. Turn. 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 Change. Good. Same, yeah. Different versions. Change. Turn. From your what? Sins. From your sins. And become? As little children. Like a child. Ooh. Humble. Humble. Like little children. You will what? Never. And into the kingdom of heaven. You know, he was saying, unless, and this is this is faith. Unless you become like children, how many people know you got to be careful what you tell them children to do? Anybody know what I'm talking about? If you put a little children on the top of the car roof and say jump, by the time the P of jump get or jump out, they in the air. You better be ready to catch them. When God say, go get something, we need to have that childlike faith to believe that if he give it to us, it's already ours. So we have to humble ourselves, believe in faith, and then be obedient and put our foot on it. Amen? Amen. Amen. There are times where we go through difficulties. And if we don't read the word of God and understand our place in him, we don't understand a lot of things that we go through. The children of Israel was given this land. The blessing was already given to them. It was theirs. But they had to go in and get it. A lot of times where we get the blessing is not where we receive it. And I have, and I have, I have talked about this concept before. We have this war going on on the inside where God has already given us something, but we have to come into agreement to receive it. We have to believe it. We have to come to the place and realize just because something is messy doesn't mean it isn't necessarily a blessing. Because some blessings are messy. Mm -hmm. Are you all hearing me? It's the reality of life. Mm -hmm. And some things, if you don't fight for and you don't be aggressive and push for, I have always said, from I came to this country, I realize if you don't ask the right questions, you won't get the right answer. <laughs> now the people you asking, they know the answer to the right question. But if you don't ask it, they don't volunteer it. Anybody know what I'm talking about? <laughs> You're all looking at me like I <laughs> Is it only me? No. And then, if you, if you walk away because they say something, and you go to somebody else, and then that person say, well, did you ask this? And I say, no. Well, go back. So then you go back, and now you ask the right question, and they give you a volume of the right things. And they could say, well, you didn't tell me this before. And they'll say, well, you, didn't you didn't ask me before. <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. Anybody know what I'm talking about? Mm -hmm. And it could get confrontational. It could get a little messy. <laughs> it might, you, anybody know what I'm talking about? Mm -hmm. But that don't mean you shouldn't do it. We need to go through and receive the blessing that is ours. We receive the word that is ours. Now we got to go and take it. Amen? Amen? The concept that I have given you before is conception and giving birth. Conception is made in agreement. Amen? Amen? And it's totally different. And it's a total different set of circumstances when it's birth. Now, we all adults here. Amen? Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, we all adults here. <laughs> we come into agreement in conception. Oh, that's a good place. We happy there. But then when the birth come, oh. it's a little messy and some pain involved. But that's where you receive the blessing. Amen. Do you all understand what I'm saying? Yes. And a lot of times that can happen in our lives. Joshua, I've given you the land in agreement. You're in a place of agreement. But when you get ready to possess it, you will have to deal with people who disagree with you. Where you receive don't always look like where you believe. You all understand what I'm saying? And as people of God, we shouldn't allow things to make us give up because it starts to get a little difficult. We got to push through some stuff. We are still children of God amidst all that is happening. It may get difficult at some times. But don't forget the promise that God has given you. The things you have prayed for. And he has said to you, I will bless you. I will be with you. Wait on me. And you get up from your knees, and then this is happening. This is happening. The future looks bleak. But God says, I am with you. I will be with you. And where you put your foot, I will give it to you. Is it going to get messy? Yes. But it doesn't change the fact. I can bless you. <laughs> Amen? Amen? You cannot expect to receive in the comfort of agreement. Doesn't always happen. We love making them babies. That's a good place. <laughs> but I ask them women about having them babies. <laughs> In a couple of minutes? Minutes. Yeah, minutes. Minutes? It's hard. It's hard. Minutes. Okay. <laughs> What's the last lake where you were at? <laughs> Point taken. Y'all listen? <laughs> I don't know about y'all, but I don't know how many minutes are in 36 hours. <laughs> it's longer than minutes. <laughs> yep. So y'all understand what I'm saying. <laughs> but the place of Receiving the blessing was different from the place of agreement. Amen? Amen. Do you think when Joshua got there and said, this is mine, the Lord told me so, everybody just backed on the side? No. Nobody was singing Kumbaya and praise ye the Lord <laughs> and all of that. Some people have great faith in church, but the moment opposition comes, they quit. We need to be fighters, not quitters. But if you don't believe correctly, you won't receive correctly. When you get in this environment to believe, you need to soak it up. That's why you need to come to church, to get ref refilled, to be reminded of who you are in Christ. And who's fighting with you? Who's on your side? And who has said, despite what your eyes see on the outside, I am still sovereign. I am God. I have the last say. Amen. And I will continue to give you what you need to get through this moment if you trust me. The last sermon I, I preached was, the Lord is my shepherd. Y'all remember that? And if we allow him to lead, it doesn't matter what we go through. The 23rd Psalm says, he leads me through. What? The valley and the shadow of death. He will lead us through these times. All that's happening. We have a shepherd. Let him lead and protect us. Amen? Amen. Joshua didn't have the magic of Moses. He didn't have the tricks of Moses. He didn't speak like Moses. 
but Joshua had a fight in him. And he knew God was with him. The church, a lot of times, seems to be strong till the fight comes. Then we tend to run away. The second someone will say, I thought it's all about love. Where's the love? Then you back off. I've come to serve notice today to the devil. No weapon formed against us will prosper. And every tongue that rises against us, God will condemn. And I believe that. Family, you have to fight for this. You have to fight off everything that is squatting on your land. You have to fight off everything that is squatting over your blessings. That's sitting over you. Over your prophecy. That's standing on your promise. God is saying, don't let the Amorites make you forget what I told you. Do not forget who you are. If you watch the farmers, they plant. And when they plant, they use a certain tool. But when it's time to reap, they use a different tool. Amen? Amen. The tool they use to plant, they just dig, the, push, make a hole and drop the seed in. But when it's time to reap, they got to pull up some stuff. Amen? Amen? But after pulling it up, they receive the blessing. A lot of times, when you are close to the answers God has for you, that is when the enemy attacks the hardest. I am here to tell you this morning, push through. Don't allow what you hear so discourage you that you forget your identity in Christ. Things that's happening externally does not change God's word to you. Hold fast to what he is saying to you. Amen? Amen. Amen. The devil is a liar. That's right. Amen. That's what he is. So when he tries to discourage you, you go in the opposite direction. Let the joy of the Lord be your strength. And this is why we need to come to church. To get some joy. Think about it. As long as you're sad and depressed, insecure, you're never going to reap a harvest from the Lord. Every great or worthwhile thing you've ever done, you did it when you were happy. Every creative thing you've ever birthed, you birthed it when you had joy. When you're distraught and dis depressed, and all you do is cry and cry and cry and <coughs> Lord, when is this going to be over? He is saying, how can I bless you when you have no joy? Salvation itself should be a reminder to give us joy. Because now we have the hope of spending eternity with God. Don't let something so depress you that you forget there's an eternity there. That's yours. Despite all of this, this other stuff. And if we but hold on, when this give up, that is our hope. Amen? Amen? Amen. The wells of salvation are the blessings of the Lord. And that is what we have joy. We pull from. It pours out a blessing on us. When you are not physically feeling good and you come to church, you hear the word of the Lord and you hear the songs, it lifts up your spirit. You're reminded of the greatness of your God. And in his presence, there is the fullness of joy. And that changes everything. Amen? Amen. We could get bogged down from the day to day 
And we can forget we're human. But if we don't forget the assembling of ourselves together, we come, somebody can bless you. You can walk up to a sister or a brother and they could just say an encouraging word to you and totally change your disposition. Amen? Amen. When we are reminded how big our God is through worship and we bask in his presence, it changes things. I can never understand people who will come to church and resist the Holy Spirit. Mm. Resist getting into his presence. It's a wonder why you came. Mm -hmm. That's right. What is it about coming and not really wanting to fall into that place and let him bring you peace and comfort and cover your soul? To change you from being under attack. That's why you come. That's right. <clears throat> Amen? Amen. That's, that's even more why you ought to worship. Because when the praises go up, what happens? The blessings, the come, blessings down. come down. God is our source of joy, refreshment, and strength in times of need. That's why we come to church to be refreshed. Joshua was a fighter. He fought all through the wilderness. He was Moses' right hand. Now Moses is dead and he's the leader. He can't do what Moses did. But he stood on the fact that God says, I will be with you. Joshua didn't play. Everybody knows when they read that, read the, 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 the Old Testament, he never used to play around. He'll kill you in a minute. He almost fought God. You remember the angel came to him and he run to the angel with the soul. Who are you? Identify yourself. Because I ready to cut up everybody. <laughs> that's what the Bible say. In the, well, that's my version of it, but that's what the Bible say. <laughs> and the Holy Spirit had to quick say, whoa, whoa, whoa. It's me. <laughs> Joshua don't play. We need that fighting spirit. Stop letting people in situations take the promises of God from you. Fight. It's worth fighting for. Amen? Amen. So I should run up on, on the angel. Whose side you on? Make it clear. The Bible encourages us. Be strong and very courageous. Be of good courage. And possess the land. God knew what Joshua was about to do. And he knew it could not be done. In his own strength. He had to trust God. God knows what you're about to do. And he knows that you can't do it. On your own. The Bible says it's not by might. Nor by power. But what? By my spirit. By my spirit says the Lord. You have to have that inner strength. To fight. That devil defying strength. That says. Come with me. The strength that makes you take a licking and keep on ticking. Amen? Amen? That inner strength that you can do all things through Christ who what? Strengthens you. Don't give up. Be like these athletes that you're going to see in a couple of weeks. They don't give up. Up. I remember some Olympics ago, I forget which race it was, but this guy, he had a pull-up. And he was like 300 yards, just going up to the top bend from home, and he pulled up. And the, and the rest of the, the athletes finished the race. And he limped. And they tried to get him to come off the track. I don't know if you all ever saw this his before. Dad came, his dad came on the track. That's right. And he refused and then his dad ran out the, the stands, came down, and told all the, the officials, leave my boy alone. And he assisted his son. And they limped the rest of the way. The whole stadium stood up and applauded them the whole time. Because that young man said, I came to finish the race. If I had to limp, 
I trained for this moment. It didn't end the way I wanted to, but I wasn't going to give up. Amen? Amen. Amen? The Lord wants me to tell you this morning, he didn't say it was going to be easy. But he did say he will never leave nor forsake you. That's and true. he will always be with you. Amen. As he was with Moses. Don't give up. Perseverance is the key to success. We have to continue to push through moments. If we can endure the pain of a moment, feeling pain like we've never felt before, our blessing is on the way. Amen. I'm here to tell you this morning, push. Push. Because the blessings of the Lord is worth it. Do not give up. The enemy has always, from the beginning, tried to say a word, listen to this, to discourage you. He can't control the situation, but he can give you a word, and you believe his word, mm -hmm. and then you act upon it mm -hmm. in a certain situation. He'll say, this is going to happen if you walk through the door. And you believe that's what he says. Because then in your humanness, you're saying, well, that's plausible. So I'm not going to walk through the door. Then go and say your blessing on the other side of the door. <laughs> Who's stopping the blessing? Me. You believe the word of the enemy rather than the word of God. You have the word of God. That's right. He already says it's yours. Stop allowing the enemy to influence you to do things you shouldn't do. Because that's the only influence he have, a word. Stop acting on his word because you already know he is a liar. Liar. <laughs> mm -hmm. liar. The word this morning, family, is do not give up. We are hearing all sorts of things. Mm -hmm. We're going to be affected by all sorts of things. But be careful. Don't take your eyes off of Jesus. Don't take your eyes off this book. This book is being fulfilled right before our very eyes. Stop letting these things so discourage you <laughs> that you forget the good stuff. You forget where your peace is where your joy is. It's not in this stuff. There are a lot of people who don't have God in their lives. Mm -hmm. And they're doing all sorts of stuff. Amen? Amen? Can't do nothing with them. But you hold fast to God. You hold fast to your belief. And God will see you through. Amen? Amen. Are you all hearing me? Yes. God will see you through. Not CNN. Not Fox, uh -huh. not MSNBC, not all the rest of them. Because everybody got their opinion. Uh -huh. And then, you got this. <laughs> Social media. A warning to the wise. You go to bed one way, you wake up the next morning and you hear, and, 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 and this is something we need to hold on to. It's just a word. You hear me, family? Hearing a word. Be careful how you let, take it into the soil of your mind. Mm -hmm. That's right. Because it will grow. That's right. And make you act. Make sure you are countering. This is why we need to come. Make sure you are countering everyday life. Are you all hearing me, family? Yes. This is how we get through stuff. Because this does not change. Outside changes every minute. <laughs> mm -hmm. But this is the constant that will give us the peace we need to endure when we get up the next day and hear everything falling down. Amen? Amen. Amen. Don't give up. God is still alive. 
He's on the throne. He's sovereign. And he got the last say. That's right. Amen. Let us trust him. Amen? Amen. Let's put our hands together and give God some praise. I wanted to tell you that this morning, like the children of Israel, things are ours. It's already been given to us. Don't let this external stuff stop. If you want to make plans for your future and start mm -hmm. something, a company, as bad as it seems, go for it. Mm -hmm. Because God don't have to go through the normal channels to get you where he needs you to be. Amen? Amen. That's right. And don't let nobody tell you, well, you know, so-and-so ain't this and so-and-so ain't that and you ain't going to get this. The devil is a liar. You are a child of God. Amen? You are a child of God. And he don't have to go through the normal channels to get you where you need to be. In spite of the signs of the times. Amen. It's so good to be back home.